Hey guys, welcome back to some Honkai Star Rail content. This video is going to be the first of a series of videos, whether you want to call it a podcast, it's going to be a more casual type videos where I try and get other content creators or people from the community in um, to just have general discussions. I don't think, want these things to be overly scripted. I want it to be more casual, something you can just listen to. You don't really have to watch if you don't want to. Um, so if you have an idea for a name for it, let me know. I'll aim to do these at least weekly once the, um, once the game does release, provided I I can keep getting guests on. So if you have any content ideas, things you'd like us to talk about, or any guests that you would like me to get on, please let me know and I will do my best to get them. In this one, we're just going to have a just, just general chit chat about CBT3, our opinions on banners, characters, just all that sort of stuff. Just a light chat in this one. Um, and now he's been sitting there, I should introduce my guest and that is Grim. And if you don't know Grim, he is essentially a, a big brain. So he's very big in the Path of Exile community uh, for his theory crafting and he is doing the same here in Honkai Star Rail. So if you wanna look at some character guides and stuff like that pre-release, I'm personally waiting waiting till we see what changes, if any changes are made to the characters before I do character guides. But he has got some very in-depth stuff over on his channel. So I definitely recommend checking him out, subbing up and showing some support because it is a new channel he has started up specifically for Honkai Star Rail. So Grim, I think that pretty much is, is a decent, I feel like I did a decent intro there, but have you got anything else you want to add uh, to who you are and, and your background and stuff like that? Yeah, I appreciate it. appreciate it. Well, um, for sure. Definitely uh, got the numbers approach there. But I think the main goal of the numbers is to kind of get the characters, show what they're capable of, what kind of teams people can put together, and then give that to the community so that they can really excel with it. And, you know, maybe even uh, have some pretty good performance on even the free to play stuff very, very early on in progression. That'd be ideal. Get everyone those free stellar jades from the end game content. 100% dude. First off, let's go into what is our favorite unit so far? Grim, I'll let you kick it off with your favorite unit. I know you know my favorite unit because I don't shut up about it, but uh, yes. like, like who is your favorite unit? Hmm. Well, it's a difficult one. You have to you have to come at it from two angles. Do you want to come at it from the thematic approach? You know, like the story and all sorts of stuff like that, or do you want to come at it from it from the like gameplay approach? Go from both. Person, one from both. From, from both. Oof. I think probably from the gameplay. Actually, it's kind of like they're both of them. I really like the CLA. How, however, you want to say her name. You know, I know there's a million ways to say it, uh, but I really like playing with her. Uh, you know, the the fact that you can actually like play with her and like wipe an entire field of monsters just with her alone, if you set everything up perfectly, uh, is really, really fun. And she's also one of the characters which take advantage of pretty much all of the uh, 1.0 kind of supporting cast. She can really like, you know, get super duper powerful. So she's the one I'm most excited about. And she has a fucking wicked uh, scythe as well. Like yeah. you got, if you got a cool weapon, it's also also a bonus. Yeah. And, and, and for those that don't know in because I get this on every video in the voice acting on star rail, the, the, the VAs say Zilla. That's what they call her Zilla. That's what I go with. I think in Honkai impact, which I didn't play personally. I don't think you did either. She, wow. they call her uh, seal or something like that. So we, I just go with Zilla because that's what they say in the game. But uh, for me, like I said, you know who my favorite is and it was 100% without a doubt, Clara. It has to be Clara, not because of Clara, but because of Svarog. I just think her, uh, okay, so controversial take. I, I think like, I, I think me, like Hoyoverse do great designs on characters, but they're all in most of their games. You look at Genshin Impact, uh, Honkai Impact, all that sort of stuff. They're normally fairly standardized uh, humanoid models. I like- the different stuff. So when you have Svarog is as a playable character, essentially that gets me excited. I think he's wicked. And I just think the animations of the way Svarog, like whenever, whenever Clara gets attacked, you get like Svarog jumping in and it's just like, and even just the ultimate, like it's not a flashy ultimate. It's just like Svarog just standing there, but it's just cool. So I, I think Clara amazing just based on design aspect, but then I, you, and you know this, I go 
I have so many theories on Clara. I, I, I need to get her in the game so that I can test all my theories on her. She can be an absolute AoE beast uh, with just AoE damage in general. But I also have this theory on her being like a battery unit where she can still deal decent damage whilst also only using basic attacks so that you can conserve as many skill points for other units and stuff like that. There's a lot of things I want to test, but in general for me, it has to be Clara. Clara is just too cool because of Svarog and that is pretty much it. Um, any... I mean you go as a character she is very interesting as well to play her right like i think that she is like probably the only character who really plays quite like she does where she like kind of sits back you build a bit of a fortress and you just let the enemies come to you and you you can get pretty rewarded for that as well can't you yeah and i i think i think a lot of people sort of I, I think she's a bit misunderstood as well. Like it's a unique playstyle, so some people may just not like that playstyle. I personally find it quite fun, so it, I, I'm definitely interested to see how players like sort of make teams and, and experiment with her to see ideas. Because with those units that are a bit different, you always get some different ideas from players once the game actually releases. So I'm super keen for that um, to see how she goes. But we we both went with a five star. Who's your favorite four star? Ooh, favorite four star. Well, I mean, it's it for me. It's got to be Ting Young because, from a theory crafting perspective, uh, for those who don't know, she is by far the best character. We, we started based on beta. Her, based on beta. Uh, <laughs> Disclaimer. Based on beta. Based on beta. <laughs> but we we started calling her a six star unit in my Discord server because she just is that insane. Um, she's she's crazy. Like even if you halved her numbers, I'd probably still consider her one of the better four stars um she just does so much and it's so great so yeah it's got to be her I, I mean it's a close second being arlen as well because he's obviously very very good as well but yeah it's gonna have to go to the fox yeah 100 percent. And, and she's she's just pretty stacked but she also being a four star it just gives you edel on access a lot easier which then just completely snowballs her as well which is which is nuts plus she has got a fairly decent design for all those fairy lovers out there as well so you can't, <laughs> you can't complain for that with that but um yeah for me like and and this happened very early on uh it has to be sampo now this is based purely on like a, a character type perspective I don't know why. Normally, I don't like that type of character, but it was like as soon as I saw Sampo in the game, it just made me think Seke from Black Clover, and like it just stuck with me. And I like I just can't help but see that every time. And even though he's got annoying personality, it's I still find it kind of funny. And also, I just love the dot aspect to him. He's another one of those units that I can see being useful as like a basic attack spammer and more of a battery for your team to generate skill points. Uh, he has the increased damage for dots. He's got the multi hit on his skill, which is going to add, um, you know, extra uh, toughness shred, which is also handy. And then if you look at his Edel on four, he's going to deal extra damage with each strike based on the dots that are applied. So I just think he has a lot of potential, maybe in a Kafka team or something like that. But in general, it's more about just the character in Himself, and I just think he's a pretty cool character in general, even though I can see that he would probably trigger a lot of people. But <laughs> I'm pretty excited yeah. for him. He's definitely a bit of a polarizing character in terms of the story. Um, but yeah, I think his full potential will be unlocked as soon as Kafka comes out because he most of his damage is dots, and Kafka basically just like triggers his full rotation every single turn with her ability, which is pretty ridiculous. So He's definitely going to get a lot better as more characters come out. We see that a lot, actually. Um, like, there's a lot of characters who feel like they're missing like a tiny thing, and then maybe there's another character down the road who is going to bring that thing. Yep, definitely, hundred percent. And I think that's just something that's going to evolve with time. And I think the one thing I want to mention in there is as well. It's like we we always talk about like you know strong characters, all that stuff. At the end of the day, you can play with anything. You you can really get away with any like character that you really like, you can use them in your team and you can build a team around them. It may not be as efficient, efficient. You may spend like a couple more, uh, you know, chaos memory, like run throughs, like, you know, maybe a month or two to try and get up to the rewards, but eventually you're going to gear yourself into a point where you can actually play the game with any character that you really enjoy. And you will be able to do something unless your favorite character is herder than you fucked. But besides that, <laughs> you, you should, you, you should have a chance, but, um, but yeah, like, I don't think the game's gonna be crazy and like i said you're just missing out on a few gems if you want to play it more about having fun and stuff like that and you can still optimize things eventually but now that we've got that disclaimer about you can use whatever you want who's your pick from the uh the starting seven that you can some is seven isn't it yeah yeah seven, yeah. seven. 
Who from the starting five stars that you can get off the beginner banner? Who's your pick? I mean, oh man, it's it's gonna have to be Bronya. As a meta slave, it's gonna be Bronya for me. <laughs> it has yeah. to be. And 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 it, why Bronya over something like Bailu, for instance? So we, we obviously only have one healer, and then in Chaos Memory, you're gonna need two teams. What's your reasoning for having Bronya as the priority over something like Bailu? Um, I mean, for starters, there's already been like a few people uh, on closed beta three who did actually do quite well with you know out the second healer. It's it's possible as long as you use March seventh correctly and very well. Um, but you know, with that aside, assuming you did absolutely need the second healer or second preservation unit, I still think that Bronya is like for me at least uh, the go-to because. Her future is just looking way too bright not to have her. And after you kind of get past the start of the game, you don't really have too many ways to specifically get the exact starting character you want anymore, other than the 300 pull. But, you know, as free to play, that's probably very, very far away. Yeah. But, yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, and and like we've discussed as well is with Bronya, if you get a Bronya, you've still got, if you, like, if you, if you happen to pull a dupe Bronya, it's still a good pull because her one star, like her idol on one is like amazing anyway, getting some refunds on some skill points, which is nuts. But then also if you look at, you know, trying to make your chaos memory runs, which is like the abyss from Genshin a bit easier, you know, if you pull even a Japad or a, um, or a Bailu, they're both going to be able to help you with that purpose. So you have more good options. And I definitely agree for me. Um, yeah, I, I agree. If I'm playing, you know, Metaslave, I'm going Bronya, but besides that, you know, I'm going Clara every day of the week because, you know, <laughs> cause I just, I just need that Swarog in my life. But, um, Moving on from that, the next topic that I think a lot of people are interested in, I saw you made a really good video about this topic as well. Um, but what banner will you personally be pulling on between uh, Zilla, Jing, or are you going to save for a future banner as a, if you were a free-to-play player? Uh, okay, so if I was a free-to-play player, which I won't be, <laughs> I won't be, um, I would actually pull one copy of Ting Young and one copy of Su Shang, and I would stop and completely save. That would be what I would do. And those are both on Jing's banner. Um, that would be my free to play strategy, the plan. Um, but yeah, that's what I would do. Yeah, 100%. Yeah, I think for me, because I'm going to play a free to play account. Um, I'm just skipping, like, there's always that, and let me know what you think about this, like, because I always have this thought in games like this where pities carry over. It's like, do I do, like, 10 pulls on the Zilla banner? Because if I manage to pull a Zilla out of that 10, then it's like, of course, I would take a, a, the cost of 10 summons on a banner that I really want something to just get a unit. But mm. if I don't... Well, it's still carrying over to the pity. However, the one issue with that is then you've pulled one four star, which is one of like on odds, the four stars on the Zilla banner aren't as good as the ones on the Jing banner. So I'm kind of torn in that sense. But when we look purely at five stars, it's an interesting topic to choose. And and this, I feel like everyone's per is going to be different personally, but I feel like, you know, do that cheeky 10 pull. Because if you get her... <laughs> Of course, you're going to be hyped if you get her in 10. If you don't, it's just contributing to that next pity. Like, what's your thoughts on something like that? Hmm. Well, there's a whole bunch of pity calculators and all sorts of stuff like that for Genshin. And there's a lot of, like, you know, people who theory the best way to, you know, spend your Stellar Jades and all sorts of stuff like that. It's a big, big topic. Um, I just don't want to, like, necessarily get too much into, but I do think that the best way to approach it is to um, kind of go up to the soft pity, try to get the four stars you want, and then crack down on the soft pity on the five star you want. That's generally the strategy which I've seen most people do. Um, so you could totally totally pull the CLA in the first 10, 10 pull. Uh, but I think what, what are the odds of that? It's astronomically low, right? It's like less than 2%. 0.06, isn't it? Well, whatever it is, it's low as hell. Um, but... Yeah, that's fair. Like, I think what I'm actually going to do on my, like, my, like my sort of free to play optimized account is that I'm going to just save for Jing banner and just go to Jing and like hope like hell I get at least a one star Su Shang. By then, maybe hopefully I've pulled a copy from normal summons and stuff like that. But like, ideally, I want one star Su Shang uh, because she's just, she's just good. 
Um, yeah. And that one star where you get refunds is insane. And then obviously you got Ting, who I'd want as many dupes as possible. And then one, like March is going to be a nice one to get dupes on as well. Uh, it's just a shame that her Edel on six, it takes you to six to start getting a heal. Now the heal's not crazy, but any sort of healing that you can get off of March, if you're free to play and you don't have that secondary heal or you don't have a Chapard, is going to definitely help her. But that is a lot of dupes. So um, we'll have to see how that rolls out. But yeah, I'm definitely thinking the Jing banner just to get those four stars that I'm really, really targeting 100%. Um, I think, you go. I was just going to say, I think, uh, you know, like, I think that because so many, so few people got to play the closed betas, unfortunately, it would have been great if it was like more open. Um, a lot of people kind of don't have the full perspective on exactly what the timeline is on a lot of the stuff in the end game. Uh, and a lot of people are used to having to do the spiral abyss and stuff like that in Genshin Impact, but there really isn't too much of a rush. I would be shocked if anyone cleared any meaningful amount of Chaos Memories in the first two weeks. And, you know, oh, that's 100%. kind of saying something. Um, the only the yeah. only way you get in there, like you can't even get your level up that high that quick unless you're like spamming all refreshes. Yeah. Um, like you, you, you might like this, two weeks, people spamming refreshes might be at level 70 with their characters. They, they're not going to be at level 80 because I did all refreshes on the beta and it took me like a month to get there. Yeah. And even at level 70, um, people were only at like six out of 10 with zero stars, basically. So you're yep. not really getting the stellar jades. You're not really getting ahead. Um, so you've kind of got like a, t a month window here, right? Uh, and that's going to include both Sally and Jing's banner. And then the month after that, they're going to probably have another two banners, which are going to contain four stars we haven't even seen yet. And there might even be a healer in there. So I, I wouldn't be too worried about, you know, kind of like stressing out too much. Uh, and I think the safer play, at least from my perspective, is to pick up the four stars, which you think are going to be good. Yeah. Uh, and then, you know, see what happens long term. Yeah. And then hope for luck. And then, and then when, and once you get to that, because what's the soft pity? Because like, this is something unfamiliar to me because I didn't play Genshin. Because the Genshin soft pity is around, what is it like? Is, is, it, is it around 75 or something where it starts increasing? Yeah, 74, 75, Genshin yeah. players will know. Let us know in the comments. But yeah, there's like the, the theoretical soft pity where your, your rate increases from that point. So you've got more of a chance. So once you hit that soft pity, now I've heard people say that it is the same in, in Honka Star Rail. I don't 100% know, but in general, once you hit that like 75, I think it is summons, you sort of like then change your tra trajectory and stop stressing so much about the four stars. And then you just target the actual yeah. five star that you want because you've got those increased rates. If that's the way it is, definitely working. So yeah, I and mean, banners summoning. It's gonna be it's gonna be fun times, dude. It can, it can really yeah. make or break your game as a free to play account. Sometimes I see some well, I see some horrid things in some games. I mean, yeah. At the end of the day, you should pull who you think you really like the theme of, right? As you so um, correctly pointed out, it is a game about you know having fun, playing with the characters you like. Um, but I think if you were to like truly like think, okay, long term, you know, two three years <laughs> kind of thing. Um, you generally, in most of these games from Mahoyo and also from what we've seen so far, use one DPS, just one. Yeah. Uh, there is different elements, so you will have to match the element correctly. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, you need three supports generally. So, I mean, you can kind of see where this is going. You probably want to use the five-star supports. Yep, 100%. And, and, and as we've sort of theorized a bit as well, it's like it's looking like the break element is going to be super important early game because you can get a lot of damage out of break. Um, but once you start scaling your attack, crit damage and all that stuff past a certain point, then like this is all in theory, obviously, we, we, we're thinking that the game's going to lean a bit more into that raw damage capabilities as opposed to concentrating on the break. Now, break does offer like a bunch of extra advantages, so it's not going to be irrelevant. And you definitely don't want to take a unit in that's going to be resisted by the enemy. Um, but yeah, it's definitely going to be interesting to see how it evolves with those uh, those options. But also, we do have some solid free-to-play options for the dps unit as well so mm. we'll have to see and, and who knows where the game will evolve if they make changes and stuff like that but yeah that's that's definitely a fair point and let's face it you pull for the unit you like and then you'll lose the 50 50 and then you <laughs> won't have enough to some to get to the next pity and that, that's pretty much the way it's going to work for most people i would assume that's the way i anticipate it for me so i try and play it off of the worst luck and if i really want a character i try and save to that 180 pity but uh, we'll have to see where it goes. But um, the final topic I want to cover in this one, uh, your biggest learnings from CBT3. Bestow the wisdom upon the viewers. I mean, well, okay. So, I mean, 
for me at least, I had no idea what I was doing, right? Because I kind of went into this blind. I didn't, I didn't come in here planning to make content or anything like that. I was just having some fun. Um, and I was using Herder, who is not very good, we've learned. I was like leveling up all the characters and, you know, I was just using the skills on cooldown. I didn't care about the skill points. Uh, and overall, I think my biggest learning is you should pay a little bit of attention at least if you care about the Chaos Memories to which characters are considered to be quote unquote good. Um, you know, with the exception to your favorites as well. Uh, and you should probably focus your materials first and foremost on a few characters instead of all of them. That would be my number one tip. Yep, 100%. And for me, I'd say my biggest learning was as a non-Genshin player and like a, just a turn-based gotcha game player, like Summoner's War, Epic Seven, Raid Shadow Legends, all those types of games, it was how different the core mechanics of this game are compared to those games. Like the biggest one that blew my mind, there was actually a couple ones, uh, the way in combat like attack buffs work is they only buff based off your character's base attack, which was like, so your gear is not included in the in combat buffs um another thing was that and genshin people will laugh at me for this but when, when i found out that your light cones slash weapons uh those stats increase your base stats that was something i had no no idea about and until i saw that so that was another one uh what other core mechanics oh the resistance one is huge so the way in CBT3 that the resistance worked, and you're the one who told me this because I had no idea because I was playing it like other games where you have a, a, an activation check where there's, there's the RNG of the activation. So if you had a 50% chance, um, kind of like on March's AOE, it's like, okay, in other games, it's it does a roll. If you lose that roll on the 50% chance, that's it. It doesn't land. If you win that roll, then it not, then it goes to an accuracy resistance check where now it's your accuracy versus their resistance. And if you win that roll, then they get frozen. Whereas this game, it's all compiled into one. And if you have a hundred, if your total accuracy is a hundred percent more than their resistance, it just lands. And that is like huge for reliability. Now, that also leads me into like, it's a PVE focused game. So you don't have to worry about that type of stuff. So in a PVE game, that make, like that sort of makes sense because you want to be able to more predict sort of stuff. Whereas in PVP, you need a bit of RNG to do it. But yeah, the big thing for me from CBT3 was the difference compared to other turn-based gotchas, which was really, really surprising to me. Yeah, I mean, we're still learning stuff every day as well. I'm like, I'm learning stuff as well. Um, but there is like a lot of stuff which is pretty unique to the game. Like even Genshin players, they come in uh, like expecting certain things and then we test them and look at footage and stuff like that. And it's not that way. Like in Genshin Impact, the resistance, the penetration, if you penetrate the enemy's elemental resistance, um, it actually like, if you go negative, it starts to not be very good. But in this game, it doesn't. It actually seems to be full value. Uh, and that's something that's throwing a lot of people. I'm sure there's stuff which we'll learn on release as well. They might even change some stuff. Uh, but yeah, it's going to be very fun to figure it all out and uh, end up on like kind of who the coolest units are and what the best teams are. A hundred percent. So that pretty much wraps us up for this episode one of the pre-launch podcast. Um, like I said, guys, if you have anyone you want me to try and get on, I can't guarantee it. I'm just a nobody and I'll, I'll, I'll ask and see if I can get some replies. <laughs> or if you have any topics, let us know. And if you have a good name for it, leave it in the comments as well. And once again, please jump over to Grimm's channel, subscribe to him. The dude is an absolute big brain uh, and he will definitely be valuable to be following at the launch of the game. Uh, any, th any last words? Scream. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to Vulcan. <laughs> That's the main thing. <laughs> Catch you guys.